apologize for the delay we had getting started. Had a little bit of a technical glitch come up, but we've got all that worked out. So my name is Kale Harbor. I'm with Advanced Control Solutions, and together with our sister companies, Olympus Controls and Gibson Engineering, we make up the Applied Automation Group. And we have with us today uh, yet another exciting presentation from the Honorable Mr. Casey Fortenberry. Casey is with Epson Robotics, and we're here to you this afternoon. Casey, I understand to talk about not just a robot, but actually a full solution kit that you have to go with that robot to take it beyond just the robot into a full solution realm. Could you tell us more about that? Absolutely. Let's uh, get started. I will share my screen. We wanted to discuss the IntelliFlex parse feeding solution that we have. So give me one second to get set up and we can get started. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Casey Fordenberry. I'm a Southeast Regional Manager for Epson Robots. As Kel mentioned, uh, we've known each other uh, for quite a while. We've been working together for the past few years. And today uh, he brought me in to talk about our IntelliFlex feeding solution. Just a bit of housekeeping so you guys understand who Epson is. Uh, we are, we manufacture Scara and six axis robots. And when you look at the Scara robot uh, market, we are number one worldwide, as well as in the US. We've been doing this for just under uh, 40 years and collectively around the uh, country and around the globe, actually, we've sold over 100,000 robots. So Epson has been doing this for a very long time. Yes, the printers and projector guys that you guys know have been doing robots for almost 40 years. And we've been doing it for a very long time and we're pretty good at it. So just a little bit about our product portfolio. Uh, we have, this will tell you exactly why we're number one. We have everything from high speed, superior performance, all the way up to a low cost option. When you really look at the Scara platform, you're talking about over 400 different combinations, clean room, uh, UL rated, wash down. And then we also have a very strong six axis portfolio as well. But today we wanna to lock in on our parts feeding solution. I think uh, if you've been working with parts, trying to orientate parts or do some type of assembly work, you'll be very interested in our solution that we came up with, uh, that we've been on the market for a while. So why did we look at parts feeding? Well, to be very honest, uh, just been in the space for so long, we knew that a lot of manufacturers need to assimilate, need to assemble parts, and as they assemble parts, they need to find some way to separate those parts, orientate them in different ways, and we looked at different solutions that were out in the market. Uh, in particular, we started to look at bowl feeders, we looked at flexible feeders. We knew that a lot of our customers were using these type of feeders in order to create some solution to help them with uh, assembly, assembly type of work. But as we go into these different feeders, we noticed that there was some gaps. So in particular, as you look at a bowl feeder, you'll notice that quite frankly, they're pretty expensive. The cost to establish a bowl feeder within your facility is very high. And if you need to orientate and assemble multiple parts, uh, it can be very expensive, very expensive. Uh, multiple feeders, a uh, huge cost. Or if you have one feeder and you want to change over into different parts, you, you, you can be down for a very long time trying to do that changeover. So just the cost to support that feeder can be extremely high. And if you wanted to get multiple feeders in your facility, you're talking about uh, you know weeks or months to attain a new feeder. So the problem with bowl feeders, we saw a clear problem that we thought uh, it, we probably could uh, help out in a different way and come up with a different solution. So from bowl feeders, we started to look at flexible feeders. And flexible feeders gives a lot of customers different options. Uh, you know, it gives you different parts to work with if you want to do some assembly work. But what we noticed was just that sometimes there were quality issues with the with the parts feeder, it, it, it just wasn't uh, up to speed of what customers need, or there was poor support. So when you need some help in trying to integrate the technologies, there wasn't enough support or knowledge base available to really help. And then as you talk about implementing a bowl feeder or a flexible feeder, you have to connect it to a vision system, you have to connect it to a robot. And so just integrating these parts together can be a night, nightmare 
And if you wanted to change over to, to different parts, that can be an issue as well. And the cycle time was not as uh, was not as fast as bowl feeders. So what we decided to do was to create our own solution. And since we're talking about solutions for the supplied event, I think this is something that customers will be interested in. Using our Epson robots, using our Epson vision system, using our Epson, Epson flexible feeder, we can give you an integrated flexible feeding solution. Uh, and we think this is very good because when you look at trying to implement someone else's vision system, someone else's robot, someone else's flex feeder, now you have three different manufacturers that you're trying to communicate with, uh, trying to make your plant uh, production uh, move faster. With this Epson solution, one vendor, everything's integrated. And so we can help cut down on that cost to retool and we can help cut down on that cost to get you up and running. And so here's just some quick features that we have with the IntelliFlex system. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned before, one vendor does it all. We have a vision solution, we have robots, we have our flex feeder. And then on top of that, we have one program environment. Everything is fully integrated within our RC Plus uh, software. In addition to that, just the programming interface in order to do the vision portion of it, in order to do the flex feeding portion of it, we're talking about a point and click interface. And then you can change over into different parts with these flex feeders. Everything as small as five millimeters up to 150 millimeters. Uh, we give you a big option so you can work with a wide range of parts. We have auto tuning, smart auto tuning built into this feature to help you guys uh, with that vibration and tuning those parts to get the right orientation. And then, as I mentioned before, we have uh, uh, everything integrated within that software. We have various backlight options that you guys can look at and then also different tray configuration options. So we think it is a very impressive solution. Uh, and let's talk a little bit more about it. At the top, you'll notice that it says Epson target markets, but the reality is just that this solution has been out for a little bit over the year, and we have applications in all of these different industries, from medical, automotive, consumer parts, uh, consumer electronics, industrial parts, all of these spaces, we have customers within this space who have used our IntelliFlex solution, and they enjoy it. We think this is a very, very, game, a very big game changer to help you and your manufacturing floor. And here's why, whether you're doing uh, kitting or material handling or some type of electronic facility, uh, whether your materials are plastic, metal or rubber, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a bracket or a tool, the feeders are so versatile that they can handle all these different variations. And as I mentioned before, parts as small as five millimeters all the way up to 150 millimeters we can handle it so you can have versatility in trying to orient all these different parts and you don't have to implement multiple bowl feeders in order to do that. And so what makes our system uh, better than most that's out in the market is just the setup. When you look at the setup, as I mentioned before, you have a vision system, you have a robot, you have a flex feeding system, you have to get communication uh, between all of it. I mean, first you wanna make sure your feeder is communicating with both your vision system as well as your robot. Then you need to tune a feeder. Then you need to set up your vision portion. Then you need to program your vision. Then you have to program the robot. And then after that, you have to optimize it. So six typical steps that can take engineers weeks, if not months, in order to get this thing working uh, uh, accurately. Uh, with our system, it's really a three-step process. Uh, you know, you program your vision, you have your robotics programming, you have your flex feeding, we tune the parts that, that you're looking for, and then we make the adjustment or the optimization in order to keep you up and running. So that, that typical time that would take you weeks and months in order to get this up and running and refine, you can literally do within a, you know, a week, uh, days or weeks uh, for us. So we would definitely save you time uh, with that setup. And as I mentioned before, we're talking about one fully, uh, everything's integrated within our software package, right? It's a fully integrated uh, solution. So one software package, you can do your feeder command set within it. You can do your configuration for your Epson vision, as well as you can program your robot in there. And then this, with the setup and configuration, you can 
pick up different parts of, uh, you can lay out different sections of the feeder and where you want to pick up the parts in order to be optimal uh, to help with your speed. You can dictate uh, what's a good part, what's, what's a bad part. You have that two part uh, recognition. And then we have the easy integration with our camera and with our vision systems. And then we also have templates available to help with your learning curve. So you're not learning this by yourself. Uh, with that template, it will get you up and running. And as I mentioned before, we have auto tuning features. Uh, we can definitely help you singulate and orient your part uh, the way you need it in order to get your, uh, your, your, your system up and running as quickly as possible. And here's a quick example of exactly what I'm talking about. Just from our solution that you have, and this is within our software, you can lay out your feeder orientation. So here, just from this example, you can see that the feeder is right and the camera is left. So now, uh, you know, you can understand where it is. This helps you so that you're not actually moving the feeder around trying to get the optimal position. You can dictate that within the software, where the feeder is, where the camera is. Uh, in addition to that, you can lay out the parameters of your part so that uh, you don't have to code this stuff in, but you can lay out your parameters, the lighting, the vision, the, 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 the calibration, and then you can define it and optimize it so that it's easier for you guys to uh, pick parts and your robot can move faster instead of trying to space itself around the entire feeder. So it's features like this will, which will make your programming time uh, very quick compared to other solutions that's out in the market. In addition to that, we also have these very cool calibration auto tuning features. It's really three steps. Three steps, lay some parts onto the feeder, click run, it starts to calibrate, and then click next. And as it calibrates, it will log with the optimum vibration amplitude. It will log a uh, typical time that it would take. You can see right there from the display window, it'll tell you what parts are good, what parts are bad to help your robot be able to pick the parts up and place them or get ready for assembly work or kitting or whatever the application is. But here's the beauty of that system. Uh, typically, when we first rolled this out, we only had it set up for, uh, you know, a couple of robot series, the G series and the LS series. But now we've expanded that. So this flex feeding solution is just not for the high performance Epson robot, but it's for the entire product portfolio. So everything from our G series down to our low cost, our T series, where you have the built in con controller, everything is supported within a flex feeding. So our entire product portfolio. Uh, supports our flex feeding solution. And then in addition to that, not only is it supported by all, all other robots, by all of our robots, but we also give you different options and variations that you can have within this feeder and within a hopper. So if you need an infrared back, backlight, if you need a red backlight, a white backlight, uh, we have those options available. If you need anti-stick, ESD, anti-static, uh, flat, tray configuration, we can give that to you as well. And then we also have different hopper sizes depending on the type of parts that you're using as you get ready to, uh, to, to pick and place your parts. But the beauty of this with our feeder solution is that we, and I probably should have mentioned this before, our robots actually support multiple feeders. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Any event that you're picking up multiple parts and you need to put them on different conveyors, we can do that. So with our G-Series, it can support up to four different feeders. One robot can support up to four different uh, feeders. And as you go into our lower cost uh, options that we have, like your T-Series, one of those robots can support up to two feeders. So we're trying to make this uh, very easy for customers to get up to speed with parts feeding and also being able to support multiple feeders at the same time. So with that being said, I just wanted to show you a little bit about what we have in terms of parse feeding. I wish you the best in terms of uh, this solution oriented. Please come and see our booth. We have, uh, we have a cell dedicated to uh, this IntelliFlex solution. And we also have another solution, which I didn't get a chance to talk about, which is our course guide. So if you have any questions, please reach out to myself or please reach out to Applied, uh, ACS, uh, and we'll be able to help you. So, Kel, I think I'm done. I will turn it over back to you, sir. Yep, thank you, Casey. Uh, this, is, this is a great, exciting technology. We've been working with it some already. A couple questions from the audience, though. 
are you able to run multiple parts in the feeder at the same time, or do they have to be all the same part per feeder? That is a great question. So the answer to that question is you can, uh, but the, <laughs> the best way to do it is actually to have multiple feeders uh, for different parts. So you can do it. The problem is your programming will have to be extremely precise in terms of what goes first with your first pick and with your second pick. You can do it, uh, but I would highly recommend one part per feeder, but we have seen and worked on applications where you have multiple parts in one feeder. Okay. The vibration that comes from the unit, is it recommended that it be on a separate stand from what the robot is bolted to? Mm, that's a great question. Uh, I'm not sure I know the answer to that. You, you've done quite a bit. I mean, wh wh what's your thought on that, Kale? Because you've done quite a bit of that. I, I want to throw it back at your court because yeah. you've worked on a lot of uh, Intelliflex together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're supposed to be the expert. But my two cents is <laughs> I like to have the vibratory feeders separate from the robot and then the vision stand above separate from that so that the vision isn't compromised by the vibration of either the robot or the feeder. And the vibration of the Understood. feeder isn't going into the joints of the robot causing the servos to have to compensate for it. Understood. So, and I think, uh, however, if, uh, however, a, a low amplitude vibration, a small part, if, if I'm running a small, like 80 size vibratory feeder, and I've got a real beefy stand that's going to absorb a lot of vibrations, there can be exceptions to that rule. Yeah, I was going to say it also depends on the, the actual series as well, right? Because working with your D, I think you'll be able to compensate a lot better than with your T, right? I, I think your series of your robot will, will play will play into that space as well. Yep, absolutely. All right, that is all the questions that I have coming in from the room this afternoon. Uh, Casey, I'd like to thank you for your time today to spend with us, to educate us a little bit more about what the IntelliFlex has to offer. And I would just like to reiterate what Casey pointed out. If you're still part of the show with us, check out the Epson booth. You can request a meeting with Epson. You can request a demo. And of course, you can email uh, any of us that's working on the show today. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, we will have a link to our website at the bottom and you can click on it if you need more information or a time to set up a demonstration. So, Casey, I'd like to thank you again, and I wish everybody here to have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Gil. Thank you, everyone. Have